Can everybody hear me okay? Good. Okay, well, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, <clears throat> and I want to thank everybody for being here and their time today. I appreciate that very much. So let me start off with the purpose statement for the Citizens Advisory Committee, the primary objective of the CACs to ensure capital maintenance and public transportation projects and programs approved by the voters during the November 2, 2004 and November 6, 2012 elections are accomplished with PPRTA funds. This committee reports directly to the Board of Directors. Not sure why we read that, but there you go. Maybe it's for the benefit of the new members. So, anyway. <laughs> or Rev. Yeah, they can't remember from month to month. Yeah, okay, got it. All right. Uh, so we have a quorum. So uh, all uh, alternates can vote. Um, so, again, we appreciate that. We have a couple of approved absences. So um, approval of the agenda. Uh, what about the minutes of the last meeting? Oh, the agenda? Oh, yes. Yep, sorry. I've already moved the agenda off the top of the pile. Sorry. It's been a crazy week. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So, um, public comment for any one items not on the agenda. Um, Carlos, I understand you have something you'd like to say? Is, there we go. All right. Yeah, this is uh, Carlos Perez, one of the alternates. Uh, I just wanted to uh, just thank um, Traffic Engineering for their Q1 report uh, that was actually included in the June package. One of the uh, projects that's on there is the uh, Las Vegas closure uh, for the railroad crossing. If you had the opportunity to read that information, it's uh, actually pretty informative, but it didn't say anything about the effects on the railroad crossing at, at Las Vegas, I'm sorry, at Royer, uh, on the Shooks Run Trail. Um, there are several members of the tra on the trails community that are concerned uh, that that closure is going to cut off access to the uh, Pikes Peak Greenway uh, and Las Vegas Street. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. Really, there's no action. I just wanted to just raise those concerns that there is some disappointment within the trails community concerning the closure of the, uh, the railroad crossing. Um, there has been a suggestion, uh, perhaps, that maybe some additional information to supplement that quarterly report might be useful to the uh, committee. Uh, this would be uh, for the, uh, uh, again, this would be for the Las Vegas um, Royer Street uh, closing, the railroad crossing, which, as we know, is, is fairly hazardous, fairly dangerous. So I just wanted to go ahead and, uh, again, commend, you know, traffic engineering for a very good report. Uh, but it does perhaps maybe need some additional information as to what exactly that's going to imply uh, or going to, how it's going to affect the Shooks Run Trail. In light that also the Shooks Run Trail, the, the trail improvements is also a capital, uh, capital A-list project as well. So it does have some effects on that. And I just wanted just to raise that as a, as a comment and some disappointment from the trails community. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we do fund both the trail improvements uh, and, and both of those are on the project. Um, Mike, would it just be too much to, would it be okay to ask the city if they could maybe just give us a status of where you guys are next month? You don't have to do it now, just maybe have Aaron or somebody next month? Yeah, Mike Jefferson Engineering. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have that because there has been discussions about that. Okay. And there's some complications because it's dealing with the railroad. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, no need to make it anything real formal or big, big, but just kind of an update on where we are. Um, I might add, um, isn't that Shook's Run deal part of the um, um, non-motorized plan? And I'm not sure whether – did you see that, Carl? Said it, was it in, uh, did you notice where it was addressed, what they're planning to do addressed in there? Uh, I think I – all right. Um, currently, the, uh, the Shook's Run, there's a, uh, a, a, a what's called a facilities master plan, what's right. called Envision Shook's Run. Uh, it may be also part of the PPAC John, uh, PPACG non-motorized uh, plan as well. I don't know if it's there, but the specifics uh, of what's called the confluence segment are part of a city master plan that was actually 
uh, uh, put together with the input from a lot of members of the uh, of the community. Uh, it's called the Envision Shooks Run uh, Facilities Master Plan, and it is in there as for some type of trail connectivity. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Hmm. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Any other public comment not on the agenda? Uh, anyone in the audience? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the June 6, 2018 regular meeting? Approve. Move to sure. approve. Second. So, second. Who was that? Larry, thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Financial reports. Bev. Good afternoon. Um, as you can see on page one, the April sales and use tax of eight million two hundred and fifty six thousand were over the monthly budget by three hundred and ninety five thousand or were a million seventy five thousand ahead of the year to date budget. So that that's good. I think there was an event in April. Um, was it the Wounded Warrior Games or a wounded warrior games were last month. Okay, there was something in April. I wrote it down and I can't think of what it is now. Oh well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's something that we didn't have in prior years. It only matters if we don't have it in a prior year as to whether it might be impacting the numbers compared to last year or compared to the budget, which was based on last year's numbers. So in June, we have the Wounded Warriors at the beginning of June and then the um, Senior Open at the end of June. So but that's uh, we'll first have to see how May looks. <coughs> Hopefully May will be good also. But I don't think there was anything in May that was major that didn't occur the prior year. So, but if you think of any of those type of events, let me know because I'm keeping track of what yeah. they are and maybe how it would impact next year's budget. We got also. state games coming up here soon. Yeah, but we had state games last year. Yeah. And so, you have a significant weather event. Oh yeah, the hail. That. Thank you. But that, that won't probably hit until next year. A lot. Well, new cars, a lot of new cars. Cars and building materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wake up, wake up. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Compared. Uh, Jean, you had a question. Um, quick question, just for information. Can we have one time events like the Wounded Warrior Games or the Senior Open? Uh, do you take estimates out for how much tax revenue was generated in this example in 15 and start with the budget? Yes, um, and I try to take them out of the right months so that it doesn't affect next year's, you know, this page one as much with the sales and use tax going up and down or having a big dip in one month that has to do with a special event. But it's interesting because as far as like fires and hail, we don't have hail every year, but we have hail pretty often. So, but this is going to be a big one with a number of new cars. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. Thank you. Tom? Uh, just a question, I guess. We, we say we get the results two months in arrears, but in fact we're three because we're looking at April. It's July. Yeah, because, because it comes after your meeting but before the board meeting. So the board saw these at their last board meeting. But it's usually a day or so before their board meeting. So yeah. when I say it's about two months in arrears, it, it is for them, but you're not getting it till the next right. month. But it's backwards. I mean, we're supposed to see them before the board does. So the question to ponder as a group is, should we shift our meeting a week? Oh. Well, then you'd shift the boards to after us? That Well, that's what I'm saying is I know there's – a ripple effect that happens here and there's a lot of people's schedules but maybe long term since we can't change what the state does we may have to reason because we're looking at at numbers that are way back and the, the question is does it make any difference if we see current numbers and that's I think part of that discussion but it is but it is something we need to think about at least and make make a common-sense decision on whether it's impactful or not 
One of the reasons the board meeting is the second Wednesday is a lot of the board members go to the PPACG meeting in the morning and they set that day aside for PPACG and PPRTA. So um, I don't know if they would be willing to change their board meeting date just because they, you know, that they just say the first Wednesday of the month is completely off their schedule at um, the city and the county and so on. Yes. So. Maybe, and I think you alluded to it. The question is, is what can we do about it? But um, maybe, Bev, since you get the report, if, if would it be possible just to email us this report and let us look at it so you can come to this meeting having had an opportunity to look at it sooner? Would that it's not available. I mean, Sorry. Well, I, I could uh, send it out after the board meeting because sometimes I get it the morning of the board meeting and I quickly put together the numbers because um, it, it, it's at the state level and you go into their systems and pull down the numbers, which works out pretty well, but I can usually get them in time for the board meeting and I could send them to the CAC after the board meeting. But I would be sending the board information because I add quite a bit of pages to your reports that the board doesn't really and have I an interest that in seeing. there's a compression in your timeline and, and Rick's timeline mm -hmm. and everybody else that's involved with this, just saying it's an issue we could decide to make, whether it's important enough to make any difference on or not, but at least we should recognize it as, a, as an issue. Yeah, I can easily, though, send the board report out to you, which has the first two pages, and then the next few pages are slightly different, and it doesn't have the capital budgets in total, those pages, um, but I would have those done then by the time your packets go out. But you would know the sales and use tax figures and see them the way you see them now. So if Let's, you'd like that, I, that's, have a talk with you guys. I can do that. Yeah, let me have a talk with Rick and Bevan, and, and then um, we'll, okay. But my question is, what does that give you? It, she would be emailing the same information that we would get for our next meeting. Right. I don't really see. But uh, the board's already it. made their decisions based yeah. on information we haven't seen. Well, there, it's really an informational item for yeah. them as well, so it's right. not a decision, so to speak. But yeah. Yeah. How, I have to make extra work for you. I don't. How does it change anything in your decision? I don't care whether you're the board sitting here next Wednesday or the CAC sitting here now. We can't change that information. And it wouldn't change because you can't change it. No decision is based on a financial statement other than budgets for next year. Right. And it, when I say that, you've already, I think you asked, or Gene so, did. So we're having the discussion we should have, and it's whether it's impactful or not. Right. I don't yeah. think it is. Yeah, I, I personally don't think it is, but I'll leave that up to some others as well. It, it, uh, I think it does, when I look at it, um, when I looked at it, the thing I'm watching, and I know that some of the members of the board are watching, is where are we towards that money we owe to 2C, mm -hmm. um, and, and how's, how is the lack of forecast sales tax impacting that commitment, and if we don't come up with that committed amount, then what? I mean, I look at it from that perspective. Um, okay. Not knowing that Did the citizens anything? approved what they, uh, not to see, I meant the gap thing. I'm sorry, you know what yeah. I meant, the, yeah. the, our commitment to the gap deal. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I guess I look at it kind of too as it, it is what it is. Um, it's nice to know if there's a spike or a lull that's out of the normal trend line, what, what that may have been. Is that something we could expect in all? coming years or stuff for forecasting purposes for the budget, but um, I don't know, anybody else got the only way about it? Well, I think, like you say, we're more looking long range as far as where are we going to be at the end of the year on meeting that commitment toward the, the GAP project, and even though we may be a month behind or whatever, um, it really doesn't, <coughs> excuse me, become critical until, say, September or October right. uh, when we're looking at uh, that year-end figure. So I think this, it, I, I can see what Tom is saying, but on the other hand, it's not a decision maker at this point. Right. Right. Okay. 
Rick? Uh, well, I was just going to say we really only had to have to address it twice a year They're on budget adjustments and then the budget at the end of the year is the only time that we are really involved in it. In that, in when she sets the budget numbers yeah. for, the, mm -hmm. for the, either the mid-course correction or the annual. And we get those before the board does, don't we? So yeah, we whenever, that anything that pertains to a decision based on these figures, we get that information and review it before the board does. Okay. Yeah, because I have to set the budget based on what I have for the CAC meeting versus what I have for the board meeting because you all have your workshop before then. Right. So it's... Okay. And unfortunately, you know, just even having them two months behind is pretty long when you're trying to set next year's in September and you're really only getting through July. So that's yeah. not great, but it, it's always been that way. Nothing's yeah, I, I think that I, having attended the board meetings now for a while, I think some of those guys are here all day and trying to re-coordinate that meeting for an informational item would not probably sit very well for, for some of them. I'm not speaking for them. I, I, I just I hear some of them that are here all day. That by the time they get to our meeting, they want that 45 minute and they're out of here. Uh, kind of thing. <laughs> so, so uh, but a good discussion. Um, we'll okay. See where it goes. Well, and with the hailstorm, back to that, I was just thinking a lot of that was in the city of Fountain, right? Where's so that? we won't, the Pike Speak RTA won't receive the one percent on anything in the city there was considerable wide damage security wide, security wide field we right got well wide right field now. then is unincorporated right. so, so yeah secure. that would that would work so anyway well, we it. It, it got the south end of the swings too yeah and, okay uh, yeah that, so we'll see some for sure then increase there so anyway compared on page two compared to last year we're, we're ahead of last year so far, 1,372,000, or 4.57%. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's about what the city is also. So we're, we're right in line with what the city of Colorado Springs looks like. Okay. So, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions on the rest of the report? Any other comments for Beth? Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hey, I, I would like to take a second before we move on and thank Teresa. For stepping in and helping us out, uh, <clears throat> uh, but Jessica's on uh, vacation, so um, thank you very much for stepping in. Appreciate that. All right, uh, 2018 capital maintenance and public transportation contract, City of Colorado Springs. Good afternoon, Mike Chavez, City Engineering. <clears throat> we have. Um, Several contracts for your review consideration. First one is a change order to the even pricers missing sidewalk contract. We are adding, um, they're doing the, actually the work on 21st Street, which is sidewalk, trail, bridge. So there's a lot of uh, non missing sidewalk work that they're doing, but that's getting paid for with uh, money from par parks and stormwater division. Uh, 300,000 that we're adding of RTA is not only for 21st Street, but for additional sidewalks as, as we've uh, finished up, um, kind of finished up uh, what they had programmed initially. That's a mess down there. <laughs> uh, any questions? Next one is um, we're separating the maintenance landscape uh, contract uh, from Wildcat's work. That was incorporated into their base contract to do <coughs> Woodman and Union, uh, federalized. So we want to close the, the grant, the federal grant and the contract. So what we do is we're just pulling out the uh, the maintenance contract and issuing a separate one uh, that's paid with RTA dollars. So they, it's a one-year uh, maintenance uh, that they, we, we found out that <clears throat> if we don't pay the contractors to water and keep these plants up the first year, they just die and it becomes a big battle. So <coughs> it's well worth it to have them uh, maintain it for a year. So that's what that one is for. My question, Mike, on that one is, is this, you said you're pulling it out of the contract, <coughs> is this just a reshuffling and a reissuing of the same money or is this additive cost? It's, no, it's, it's, uh, basically it's, it was in the original contract, we're pulling that out. Um, 
and, and reissue a contract. Uh, we are adding a, a $10,000 force account just in case there's additional stuff, but in, in the original contract, it was $55,000. New contract, but mostly funded with RTA it's all money, which is already included in the project. Yes, all RTA well, money. Actually, uh, Jim, if I could. Um, I remember the original discussion we had on this, and that's because it was a combined project. Um, in the past, we'd had discussions on Bijou and Woodman Phase 1 and things like that, that the RTA capital wasn't to be used to pay for landscaping. But in this particular case, because it was combined with federal funding, that that was going to be the case. So is the federal funding gone away or well, because we, you guys are closing out federal? Yeah, we, we've used up all the federal money, but there's a long process to close it out. So we don't want to keep that contract open for a year just to close it out. Because there's a lot of paperwork and yeah, credit involved. Yeah, there are a lot of requirements, a lot of, a lot of extra daily log stuff. So we, so that, that <clears throat> this landscape work was in the contract and, it, and you know, whether it, how it was going to get paid for, we weren't sure. We, you know, we used the grant money first. But what's left over now is RTA money, so we're just pulling that scope of work and issuing a separate RTA city contract to get it done. Okay, but because this is maintenance funds, shouldn't it? No, be no, it's, it's capital. This it's capital. is capital I, because this is a maintenance project. No, no, it's, cap it's a capital project. It's 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 uh, an establishment period. So basically, okay. yeah. So, so even though you're using it to maintain the landscaping, it's not. It's it's considered cabin. Part of it. Just, it's just something we found that okay. that if we um, don't water to die. Well, so not only that, but basically, 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 what we used to do is the. We, the capital project would pay for landscaping, and the contractor was responsible for to keep them. To, well, not to maintain them, but to make sure that they lived. <laughs> so what they did basically is let it sit for a year or two, and then they let it die, and then they come back and plant new stuff, and then walk away. And that just wasn't working out. Okay. So we, we figured it's, it's well worth it to spend a little money to pay them to make sure they keep watering it and establish it. Um, and then it, there's a lance, there's an irrigation system that'll keep it going, but. Right. So that's, but anyway, just from our experience, we just feel it's, it's worth it. <laughs> then we don't get CAC members saying, why is all the trees dead on? Yeah. <laughs> Would have been. <laughs> uh, next one uh, is uh, change order to CPNY. They're the engineer on the academy over Cottonwood Bridge replacement. And uh, part of that is for some additional engineering. We, we did this as a, Construction manager CMGC. So basically, it's it's kind of like a, a design build. It's a variant of a design build. So we went to construction without having plans fully done. So <clears throat> as a contractor and the consultant work out things, details, and those get finalized after we start work. Uh, there's some additional work that that we're paying CPNY for, and then the bulk of it is also to uh, have them do construction management during construction. Can I ask real quick, we've done several of this kind of where we get going, get the ball rolling before we actually have final, any finalized plans. Have you guys found that that's a um, more efficient monetarily? Is it saving us money in the long run? Or is it costing us money because we're having to come back and keep increasing amounts? This is probably the second one that we've done. We did the, there was a, on Woodman or Delmonico Bridge. I think we, we, we we're finding that it is helpful. I think, uh, especially on the, these little bridge projects, there are a lot of unknowns and a lot of complications. It helps to have the contractor on board at first and they identify th issues. Um, so I think in the long run and, and the short of it is, yes, it, it, it is. There's always some additional money we have to spend. Right. I think it's working for us. Cool. It'll be interesting to see the, these two, the Delmonico and this one, when, once they kind of finish out to kind of get some kind of an evaluation mm -hmm. on that. And we're working with Kramer. They've been really good about uh, very fair pricing and really put a lot of effort into helping us, you know, iron out some of these details. There's a huge telephone line that CenturyLink that really threw a wrinkle into how, what do we do with it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, so, Mike, Mike, hang on. Yeah. Um, is your experience that your design builds and your complete design before you build engineering costs are identical or is one more expensive I mean do you end up spending more engineering dollars by doing a design build uh, no because I think if uh, if we had a traditional design project and they're out in construction and something comes up that doesn't work in the field or the plans don't match 
we have to go back to the designer and have them rework it, especially if it's and if it was some negligent on their part, they pick it up. But if it's just some unknown condition, uh, we pay them. Similar to now is you know we we went to construction without final plans, but as we finish something up, we're paying them. But it's also based on what we've seen out in the field, so the the need to redesign it is minimized. So it's about the same cost. Also that. Wasn't the Cimarron interchange done with a similar thing where the contractor proposed some alternatives to the original thought process? And I can't remember that one. Well, the no. exit, they added the bridge part of the contract. Mm -hmm. that was, yeah, we, we added it on to, a, but I don't know if it was a design build. You, no, no cat, or the inter, Cimarron interchange. The Cimarron interchange. Oh, you mean, uh, yeah, that's see, I'm not sure what they did. You also have a similar similar circumstances on West Colorado. When I say that, you had no concept of how many tires are going to be in the creek <laughs> and how much, <laughs> how many layers of trolley tracks. Well, we knew we knew those. You knew some of it. Yeah. I was, no. Some of us have been around a long time and saw some of those. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you lay those, Rev? <laughs> <laughs> the second set, not the first. Uh, I didn't plan any of the tires. <laughs> that was good. Uh -oh. Any other question on that one? Uh, so next one is the uh, same project. is for the contractor. And again, as we finalize quantities on the plans, uh, we've adjusted uh, the, the quantities uh, with the unit prices, and so there's a change order at Kramer for 69000 And then the last three are contracts for with uh, paving companies for the operations department to do <coughs> RTA paid for overlay, mill and overlay. So they're just uh, they're, uh, task orders, and these contractors and contracts are just there to be used as needed. <coughs> any questions for Mike on any of the others that we haven't already discussed? Um, okay, so we need a form of recommendation. Do I have a recommend? Cheryl? Move to approve. All right, Cheryl, move to approve. A second? Second. That would you, Rick? Okay. A uh, second by Rick. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Was that a one day? One day? Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, 6B, Town of Rama, El Paso County. Ms. Jennifer. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Advisory Commission Jennifer Irvin, El Paso County. Um, this item that is on your agenda today is uh, uh, what we're asking for you to do is uh, some approve for content. Uh, we are still working out some of the legal details, um, and uh, but I, but I think uh, we're confident that the content is there. So this IGA is essentially um, to allow El Paso County to assist the town of Rama on their one capital improvement project. They do have a capital improvement project for chip sealing of certain roads out in the town of Rama. And um, so knowing that uh, there is a large cost to mobilize and do uh, this work by contract, uh, we've been speaking with the town of Rama to try to do a coordinated effort so that uh, El Paso County, with our great crews, um, could go ahead and do the work on behalf of the town of Rama, um, and then just uh, receive reimbursement for the materials through PPRTA and also for uh, staff's time, and, and it would not include any markup. It's just a direct reimbursement. Um, uh, because the, the area is so small, it's 2.21 miles, um, it would really uh, cost a significant amount to contract that out and uh, have a contractor mobilize. And um, because our folks um, 
do not get paid a ton, <laughs> um, we don't are are not including any markup on that, and it's a relatively reasonable cost. As we look at other contracted efforts, we're able to do that at a much more cost efficient. Our folks are out in the area anyway this year because we're doing other chip seal projects out in eastern El Paso County, so we're happy to do and coordinate that work and get that into our schedule. Um, it, it's not a final and complete document because we're still working out the legal, but we do want to go ahead and do the work in July, which is actually the best time to do chip seal. Um, and, and so I know that Town Arima will get the best product um, out, out of that. So uh, that's essentially what we're asking for you to do today is give us a head nod on this IGA. And um, I don't know if uh, Cindy wants to say anything. Um, I just want to say that um, with working with El Paso County, um, we're getting, basically we were going to do as many roads as we could afford. So with the help of El Paso County, we're going to do all the roads. Yay. So we could not have done that without them. And um, we've actually already done the prep work, the crack seal and the uh, repairs in anticipation. So. Um, please approve this. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, if I could, uh, if I remember correctly, we've done similar things with like Green Mountain Falls in the past, right? So there's. Uh, not where El Paso County has actually specifically done the work with our highway crews as far as in support with engineering and staff time from that perspective. Um, this one is a little bit unique because it is a capital project where we're actually physically using our crews to do work. Mm -hmm. on another jurisdictions um, so that's why um, you know we're, we're doing some work for Green Mountain Falls and because we're doing that we're not asking any reimbursement but this is a little bit different where we're actually physically using some of our crews so that that but but I guess in in summary you know we do try to work with all the other jurisdictions as mm -hmm. do you know the city of Colorado Springs I mean our goal here is to complete all the projects in PPRTA and that's what we're trying to do I think it's great I move approval um, uh, do I have a second no. uh, could I make a friendly amendment? just a, a, a discussion I'd like to make a friendly amendment to the sure yeah let's hear it I move approval on the con Addition that it is approved by the county and uh, final legal you mean yeah the final in other words I'm not an attorney I think we should prove it conditionally that it's acceptable PPRTA and a county attorney which in turn would get it approved the basic idea of this is to get it in front of us we give approval or recommendation but I don't think we're qualified to recommend approval on a legal document they, that's basically so I recommend that it be approved contingent upon the acceptance by the two attorneys, PPRTA and the county. Uh, I don't know whether they have legal counsel in right. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I accept. I have a very good attorney. How about I, the town? <laughs> the town, too. No, yes. I, I, I think that makes sense. I, I accept that as a friendly amendment. You second it? You guys, Gene, you guys are okay? Yeah. Uh, I, I have a question, if I may, before we take a vote. Um, it, it stipulated that you were giving up any future distribution of RTA funds. Correct. For, is there a time limit to this, just until you reach the 74, just until you, you reach the total cost? If, if you remember in the past, um, El Paso actually fronted us our capital outlay money. Mm -hmm. So we were hoping to do this two years ago, but it didn't happen. So we really don't have any more capital outlay. Anything is paid back to El Paso County for this um, capital, the 10-year program. So we're not out anything, honestly. Okay. So you anticipated it would be repaid by the end of the 10-year period? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. I, it, wasn't <laughs> it wasn't stipulated for how long, so I was just... Um, trying to ask the question that you might have another project 10 years from now you want to get done. But they also, <laughs> in, in this, um, any increase in their estimate will come to the town of Rama anyway. Um, so we're not going to approve another 70000 so, Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we have a, not, a recommendation, um, a, a amendment, and then an approval. Uh, or in a second. So, any further discussion? Gene? Um, 
I know that the wording that you're asking about in here that uh, that would pertain to all future capital out for money to reduce the town of Rama uh, only for the duration of this current EPRTF. Right. Yeah, that was mine too, just forever. Okay. Uh, any further questions? Uh, say again? Or until it's paid. Well, they, they are this, the capital outlay for this for this 10 year period is already, already done. It's already yeah. allocated. So, even if, even if we have an increase to where they have, we have any, you know, a rainfall of good money, or let's say 70000 and with you know, sales tax and stuff like that, it goes up to 75000 know, we, we got to go through the B list first. <laughs> Okay. All right. Does Brady yeah. even have a B-list? No, we do not. <laughs> I'm going to put it in that traffic light. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or a roundabout. Maybe that would be no. yeah. Okay. So we have a, a, a recommendation and an approval. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And I will make sure that if it's not finalized by the board meeting that we're approving the concept and not necessarily the legal language. I hope so. Because I have a board meeting that night as okay. well. So <laughs> we could. Okay. You want to get it done? Yeah. Got it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, member government and other reports. Uh, transit services. Um, Brian, because we moved a meeting, had a conflict and was not um, able to be here. Um, so, um, I, I will say that I had a question for him and I emailed him. Uh, I haven't read his response yet. Um, my question, uh, it's an information only item, but my question was that the percentage, the 4.66 decrease in the ridership in 2018, that tends to be a trend for 2018. And the question was, when you add capacity and the ridership stays the same, your percent of ridership is going to go down and uh, until the ridership increases to pick it back up. And so my question to him was, is that what they think this causes? Because some of the big routes, they've added more frequency, uh, additional buses, which makes, equates to more capacity. And so... Um, it would make sense if the ridership hadn't caught up with that additional capacity that you would have a trend down on a, on a percent of ridership basis. So I, um, I but, can share his response with folks. But if you look at it, it's, the ridership was higher last year in every category, so it's not a capacity issue. It really is fewer riders. It, it may very well be. And I, like I said, he, it gave me a fairly long, um, and it came in since I got here. So. I hadn't had a chance, but I, I'd be more than glad to share that with you um, after the meeting. Um, so any, any other questions? If you have any questions for Brian or for the transportation, uh, we can get them to them, um, and then they can address them at the board meeting, or they can provide them to me, and I can share them, or, or Rick, or whatever, however that works, whatever works for everybody. Okay, moving on. El Paso County... Um, this is the item where we're ex explanation of Carl Springs utilities and the cost share. Dennis, are you the stucky for this? <laughs> uh, Dennis Barron, El Paso County. Uh, I'm not sure what the question that originally generated this, but I did put the the information together. So, uh, are there any specific questions I can I, answer? I, if, if someone who may recall this better than I do. I, I think the question, Dennis, was um, um, there's a tremendous amount of utility work that's in part of this project, and that we've known that from the beginning, um, and that there was a, a cost-share agreement, and some of it was paid by utilities and, and some of it was paid by RTA project costs. And I think it was just a, trying to understand what 
how did you guys determine if it was a CSU cost or whether it was a project cost? And I think that was the genesis of the question, if I remember correctly. So if that's not, somebody please. Well, generally, and, and a lot of this was developed before I got involved in the project, but with the multi-jurisdictional project, uh, with a lot of it in uh, the city of uh, Colorado Springs, uh, it was agreed by the uh, management uh, planning team to in to utilize the agree executive agreement between CSU and um, and the city of Colorado Springs as the basis for allocating costs. Uh, and that agreement essentially says if it's a publicly funded project approved by the voters, they, they lay out the, the requirements and I, I did provide the table. But um, essentially they view it as 100% project cost unless there's betterment or and, and that 100% project cost gets offset depending on the age of the facilities to be relocated or replaced. So um, specifically within the contract we're replacing uh, water and sanitary facilities for CSU. Uh, they also identified an opportunity since we were ripping up the roads and construction to take advantage to install new infrastructure. Some of it was uh, fairly old and I think on the chart a lot of it falls into the I'll uh, say 80 to 85 percent cost of CSU. Some of the younger lines uh, it's less 20 percent uh, uh, so depending on the line and we worked with um, Adam Baker at CSU uh, Water and Sanitary uh, to identify the age of the facilities, but we we basically rely on CSU to identify the age and, and apply the appropriate percentage to this. And we've incorporated the water and sanitary work within the contract to have Wildcat construct it just because it makes sense to coordinate that in conjunction with all the other work that's ongoing because you, you need to locate the storm sewers and, and uh, construct in the same area at the same time. On the electric, um, part of the project goal was to underground the electric and to get rid of all the, the overhead uh, mess and poles that are in sidewalks and, and get that all taken care of. That, is, that work is essentially being done by CSU. Um, and they agreed to split the cost of that 50-50 with the project. It, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure the genesis of, of that. I'm not sure that falls into any specific agreement, but it was approved by the CSU Utility Board uh, and, um, and the, the project management team that that would be a, a shared cost. And that shared cost would involve um, CSU providing uh, undergrounding their electric system, removing the poles, providing transformer, uh, transformers and vaults. And then the project would connect existing uh, residents and businesses to them. So the, the connection portion is a project cost. Um, and um, there are some concerns with that, uh, given the, the age of some of the facilities, whether they're, they're meeting code or not. But we will address that as, um, as a, a, a project cost under the contract. The, the undergrounding portion we're splitting with CSU. CSU Electric required us to f front the money for our share of that cost. So we paid, uh, and I, I don't remember whether I outlined it in here, but we paid uh, CSU Electric, uh, we, get, we cut them two substantial checks, one for the undergrounding system, which was their estimate of what our uh, cost was going to be, and we also uh, gave them a separate check for our share of the, uh, of the installing the new light poles on there because they, they furnish the poles and, and install them. The contractors installing the foundations for the poles, the conduit system, and the, the pool boxes, and CSU comes in and installs wire in there. So it's a, it's, a, it's a combination. Now, those dollars were based on a CSU estimate of the work. Uh, where we are with respect to that, we have to reconcile that at the end of the job. They, they keep uh, work orders on on how much uh, time it's uh, taken to do that. Um, but we continue to run into complications with 
other underground things that we find, they, they experience the same thing. So we have, I think CSU used a fairly high contingency, but uh, um, whether that's sufficient or not. So at the end of the job, either we get some money back from CSU Electric, highly unlikely, or we will, or we will uh, owe money to them. Similarly, on the, on the water and wastewater, uh, same thing. We need, uh, it was based on an estimate of, uh, and unit prices in the contract, but we've, we probably didn't have a complete list of unit prices, so we've added some via one of the change orders. There were uh, changes in quantities, changes in some unit prices, um, and we'll uh, have to reconcile with CSU Water at the end of that. So. I'll, Cheryl, and then Tom. Dennis, thank you. Um, just a, a quick question. How does Manitou Springs water and sanitation meld in with the CSU? And uh, uh, Manitou Springs was a separate, uh, I think they operate under a franchise agreement in, uh, with uh, CSU. Oh. But um, so the undergrounding uh, portion is lumped into the thing. The CSU is underground on the electric. They're undergrounding everything we do. So. Um, Manitou Springs requested a, a more frequent placement of light poles than the city of Colorado Springs. They, they, they doubled the spacing. So it was agreed that Manitou Springs would pay the, uh, the cost of the extra light poles in there. And that was, um, uh, I think the URA actually funded the cost of that. And we got a check from them uh, at, at, not right at the beginning, but uh, early in the project to cover uh, the cost of the extra poles for the electric. Uh, but the project is paying 50% of the undergrounding cost. It's not split between, it's, the PPRTA is, is paying that. Now, uh, we also upgraded the water and sanitary facilities in Manitou Springs. There, the project paid the installation, the PPRTA paid the installation cost. Manitou Springs, again, the URA, funded the cost of materials. So they furnished pipe, manholes, all the fittings and everything. So basically we ran a tab. The contractor ran a tab using uh, Manitou Springs, and I'm looking to Ann for confirmation there. Um, uh, ran a tab with their vendors, so they got the materials from them. The bills went directly to the URA, and they paid them for the materials, the installation costs, because we got separate unit prices for an install only versus a furnish and install, mm -hmm. which we have in the city. So, so, it, so we got multiple things happening with respect to utilities on this job. But that does include all utilities. What about the you know communication, you know telephone, um, all of who pays for that project? Um, no, uh, Century, uh, the, the Century communications Energy. companies relocate their own facilities. Okay, uh, uh, so they're. Both, most of the project we're using a joint trench approach where uh, CSU does the initial trench for the undergrounding utilities and you have Comcast, CenturyLink, and Manitou Springs through a, a, an empty conduit in two. So they go in uh, with their own contractors. Again, it's a lot of coordination, but we're not paying for that, but they have to be there to do the work when CSU is installing their things. Gotcha. Thank you. So. Very complex, a lot of pieces to pull together. I had a, a, um, just a, if CSU takes the opportunity while you've got a trench open or the street dug up to do something on their own to upgrade something or anything, is that their cost? It's in theory their cost, but I'm not sure I, yeah. would, I would know that. Right, yes. got it, okay. It's, I mean, uh, I mean it's going to be better in the end for everybody, but yeah. I, I, so. Yeah. Jane. The first sub bullet under your uh, section F where it talks about telecommunications facilities. Uh, are those CSU telecommunications yes. facilities? Or yes. It, uh, that's uh, CSU. If, so if they, if they install, and that, that again, I think wording came out of the agreement. So CSU also runs telecommunications facilities, but we're not running any of them uh, in, in, on this project. Uh, they're private utility companies uh, that are doing the telecommunications. If they lease any of the installed fiber optic to some other entity, 
whether it be governmental or non-governmental, does that affect how much uh, is covered by PBRTA? Um, I don't think we're installing fiber optic. We're installing electric power uh, through CSU. So uh, I don't know the answer to your question, but we're not installing fiber optic as part of the, uh, the underground effort. Uh, so, uh, what would be their telecommunications facilities that are in the area? They're, they're not really installing any in this project. That was a general statement that that comes out of the general agreement if they were going to install telecommunications. That's, I took that wording right out of their agreement. So it covers those projects where they might be installing telecommunications. But in Does this it? project, we're not installing telecommunications. CSU is not installing telecommunications. Well, that could be smart grid technology on information back from their power grid or from their electronic meter reading or any of that kind of stuff that I would envision would be part of their internal telecommunications. I don't know. From my perspective, they're putting a conduit in the ground, running wire to deliver <laughs> electricity, and uh, you know, if they have other uh, facilities going in, I don't. We're not supposed to be getting charged for that. Okay. There is a, a fair amount of trust required with the thing. One other question is: Can you explain to us what a non-exclusive public utility easement is? For um, those of us that don't know, like me. Um, on this project, uh, because the, the the parcels where we have to install sidewalk and and uh, the electric is so close to the existing road, the buildings are so close. There's not a whole lot. So we, on this project, we are actually securing uh, calling public utility easements to install sidewalk and the infrastructure for um, um, the electric undergrounding and the 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 communicate the space for the communications and companies to install their pedestals and everything. So we've gotten uh, like a 15, uh, or I'm sorry, probably a 10 foot wide easement behind the old curb and gutter to install sidewalks and and the electric and, and communications facilities. So non-exclusive meaning not just it's gas, this, water, or just it, no. It's it it's it's a public utility easement, but it's not assigned to one particular company. It has multiple, multiple uses. So the utility companies can use that area also. And they're doing that uh, by installing the facilities in the joint trench. Uh, we have actually installing vaults in the sidewalks as we go along, a huge four by six underground vaults. And, um, and at each of those vaults, the communications companies that are going in the need to swing around with their conduits, put uh, their pedestals uh, to provide service to the different residents and businesses. But that's on them to do that. OK. <clears throat> um, this was an informational item. Um, any other questions on, on this? I, I think it provided us a little better understanding. Um, and the complexity of, of everything involved. So, Dennis, I appreciate your time for putting this together um, very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, City Cara Springs monthly change order acquisition report. So, we have a handout that was an update. Is that right? Mike Chavez, City Engineering. <clears throat> this is just an informational. Uh, Item. If there's any questions on them, I'd be happy to answer them. Brett? Mike, we just had a discussion about costs, utility costs. Mm -hmm. Have you any indication, uh, any idea how much the Pikes Peak Avenue construction cost? The utilities are overwhelming, and I have no idea that the streets more mature than me. Just for a couple, a couple years. Well, there's a few small elements yeah. here. Um, actually, on Pikes Peak, uh, that is a cost share, but the utilities are sold. CSU is paying for the bulk of it. There's about two or three million dollars worth of waterline work, but that will be covered, I believe, probably in 80 20, with 20 the city or the project covering 20 percent. CSU 80. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is the project started off at, for the sake of discussion, 12 and a half, and we heard something like 13. 
had actually went to bid for like 19? 17, 17, I think. Well, regardless, a whole bunch more. Mm -hmm. How much of it is utilities? I, I said, I think about there's about 3 million uh, that I recall, 3 million utilities, which were kind of in our estimate. I think the big driver there were just escalation of unit prices from when we put the together the, the project back in 12, and then uh, the stormwater requirements are big. Those are hitting us big time. There was about 2 or $3 million there we weren't anticipating. Some of those pipes weren't very new in front of the Gazette building. Which pipes? The that they've been replacing. They were, they've actually used ductile iron that nobody seems to able mm -hmm. to understand why in certain areas. Well, and in that case, if we're moving or uh, moving or abandoning newer lines, but yeah, the, the, the project cost is higher than if, if the age. I, I didn't mean it that way. Hmm. I, just, I was thinking the age thing and. The <laughs> this, and I mean, I, I've said this before, it would be public record. This utility agreement we like. I like, I've been, you know, I've been at the city for 25 years, and we used to have a different one, but when the projects and, and programs came in, CSU needed some kind of help, but um, the utility agreement as is, I like. I know we've had previous city engineers who came in from, wanted to simplify it, and we said, let's leave it alone because it kind of works. <laughs> um, so I, I think we, we come out in a good position. I, I'm not questioning the agreement. I'm, whoa, they keep putting pipe in and <laughs> big pipe, concrete pipe, PV, HDPE, PVC. This is on that project. And pipe speak by more. Okay. okay, so any questions for Mike on the city's change orders? Just a quick Just one. Just one a quick oh, one. Go ahead. go ahead, Brian. No, no, no. Larry, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you, you said that the uh, the stormwater uh, changes have had a drastic effect upon the Pikes Peak Road project. Um, was that uh, since... Mayor Southers came in, uh, considering the fact that the previous mayor did not do anything with stormwater, and so now with the new mayor, he is really putting an emphasis on. I think, and I don't have a problem. Yeah. With stormwater. No, no. Actually, it's just uh, it's following our drainage criteria manual, uh, and 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 that that's what's at you know adding the water quality component and the, the interpretation of uh, one of the couple of. Components of it were we kind of got a uh, an opinion from uh, what was our attorneys and also from um, golly I forget but basically there was the interpretation of what certain requirements meant and it kind of played against us. Um, right, and a, lo a lot of that stormwater stuff uh, was due to that federal agreement that we had. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, one question I did have is um, on the Wildcat construction. Um, it says additional flow fill for abandoned what? Oh, uh, so basically um, there was a, a culvert under the uh, Shooks Run, uh -huh. and when uh, when we cut across it to lay the pipe, they had basically, the old culvert had been abandoned and it capped it on the oh. ends, but when we dug in the middle of the bridge to, to put new pipe perpendicular, there was a big void there that went to fill. Okay, got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I have one question. Okay. There, you go. there we go. Um, all this starts to kind of look like funny money after a while when you see hundreds of millions and hundreds of thousands of dollars. But when, just for example, this one with Wildcat construction, $99,475 is 8% of that. And like you said, you ran into some things that had been capped and you didn't know about. But when do you get to the point where, or if you can explain to me, how that's investigated to make sure that we're not being taken advantage of. We have some pretty good engineers and construction management teams that we hire that really work well and watch out for the city's interest. And we we scrutinize, and they you know they really make sure the contractors justify uh, what they want asking. Uh, we you know we 
they <coughs> beat them down on pricing many times. You know, say, hey, this is a little bit high. Seems that so they're um, they're watching out for us and they do a good job uh, on all these large multi-million dollar projects. They've done a good job helping control costs. One of the things that we have here is basically this contract has got the exemption, so we we can come back uh, as long as the change order isn't over a hundred thousand. We can just put on the log, and if we reach ten percent increase uh, overall, okay. then then we start coming to approval of all the okay. change orders. Okay. 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 All right, guy Brian. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, El Paso County monthly change orders. Any questions for Jennifer or Dennis? In El Paso County. Good job, Dennis. <laughs> Okay, administrative actions, uh, item number eight, report of previous board actions. The memo's in your packet. Uh, I'll be glad to take any questions. Okay, eight, eight B. Okay, a C, uh, update on CDOT side 25 GAP project. Uh, there is one update, I, th I think uh, you've received uh, an email from me, but just to get on the record here at the CAC meeting. Uh, the feds um, approved the finding of no significant impact, F-O-N-S-I, called a FONSI, which <clears throat> means uh, that you can ch check that off the checklist of the uh, items that this project has to go through. So they've met their environmental uh, step and they can proceed beyond that um, to the next step. So that's good news. That was not in your memo in the packet, but that's since then. And uh, any any questions on the update that's in your packet or on the Fonzie? Questions? Okay. Somehow well, they're doing the northern part first. Yeah. They already yeah. started on some of it. I was just up there yesterday. Um, the Walmart uh, Court of Appeals decision on Walmart. Uh, and uh, since the last CAC meeting, the uh, deadline for Walmart to appeal was uh, June 28, and sure enough, on the last day, <laughs> they did it, uh, file an appeal with uh, to go to the state Supreme Court, and that's a two-step process. Uh, the first step is to see if the Supreme Court will receive it, if they'll consider putting it on their docket or not. They, they don't have to. So um, we'll just float. Um, I, th I think the uh, PPRT attorney, um, in consultation with our consulting uh, litigator, um, might have a e time estimate uh, when we get to the board next week, but uh, we don't have a time estimate right now to, to, as to when the Supreme Court might decide if they're going to take the case or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dior has been collecting it since day one. This is the question I had last month. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, sorry. No, 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 that's fine. <clears throat> All right, any other questions on that? Um, any questions on the staff field review? Thank you. All right. Um, I, Dennis, I, I do have just a question for you or Jennifer. That change order on the property acquisition report that the large one for out on Mark Shuffle South, is that kind of, was that the one, Jennifer, you were talking about a month or so ago, does that kind of finish up that acquisition out there of South Mark Shuffle? Yeah, that that um, that change order uh, was um, related to the CIG plant. We changed the profile of the road in front of uh, the CIG plant, gas plant on Mark Shuffle. There were some impacts to their property. We entered into an agreement and we used uh, the property acquisition cost to cure MOA as the item. That's why it's listed as a property acquisition. But we approved, took it to our board to approve, and uh, we based the original agreement on an estimate uh, of the work to be done. Um, and um, they pr proceeded to do the work. They ran into some complications uh, during construction field where they had to spend additional costs to, to do that. We had agreed to re reimburse them the actual cost to, to 
cure their the problems caused by their, the road relocation and rebuilding, and um, and it exceeded it by I forget what the amount was, uh, thirteen, fourteen thousand. Yeah, dollars. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, we um, uh, we had to amend that. <coughs> Uh, agreement, and that's what that is. Okay. This was uh, just to uh, bring back the history from uh, September, October. This was uh, the result of the fact that uh, a proper contractor, properly qualified contractor, um, for the the gray the, field. The, the, yeah, the gas uh, company, since they have all sorts of gas facilities for people to work in their thing, they insisted that the contractor be. I think they called it brownfield certified yeah. or something yeah. like that. Um, uh, Wildcat, because normally we just had to work on the Wildcat's contract and have them do it. But since they weren't certified to work in, in the gas facility, uh, they suggested that they hire one of their contractors to do the work. Uh, uh, we did what we could outside of the facility, uh, but uh, the stuff within the facility that needed to be done, uh, they got estimates, they bid it out, and, uh, and then they ran into some complications during the uh, uh, the construction, which added some cost to it, so we had to come back and increase the amount of the agreement. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, Dennis, for clarifying that. Appreciate it. Um, uh, agenda topics for next meeting. I have a note to ask the staff to come back and just give us an update on the Shooks Run Trail Vegas Crossing thing. Uh, any other? Larry? Are, are we getting close to closing out Mark Sheffel South so that we can see how much money may be reallocated to Mark Sheffel North? <laughs> uh -oh. yes. was, was Dennis trying to sneak out and I cut him off? He's going to get a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> he needed more fuel to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are getting close, okay. We still have some uh, remedial work to close out the permit issues on that. We also built some water quality ponds there for the city, and we have some uh, remedial work and, and as building of those things that the city's requiring for us before they will take ownership of the thing. We also uh, have some remedial work to some of the sand filters. Some of it is warranty work, some of it's an additional, falls into the, the, the maintenance of the, of the thing, like if we have to reseed or do some additional watering or repair some stuff. So there's a combination of some maintenance work there, but it's uh, we are we are once that's done, we should be done. I think I think the only property acquisition item remaining after that we were closing out with Lorson Ranch on. Uh, we went through eminent domain on that for Lorson Ranch, and I don't know whether that finally got uh, resolved. You know, Jen. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean we've. Res Resolved it, but we still have to close on two properties. We've got it resolved, but closing on those two properties. And then what I would say is that once we close out Mark Shuffle South, um, we still have a PPRTA Capital One project that's underway in Meridian South. So um, any leftover monies is going to that, and then would be going to Mark Shuffle North. Uh, that answer your question, Larry? Sure. So they're getting close. Well, I, I guess in our previous discussions, I hadn't heard that they were going to move funds from uh, Mark Shuffle South mm -hmm. to another project. Uh, well, or maybe I missed it uh, at one of the meetings. It was in our all of our budget items and the latest update to the PPRTA uh, on the, our summary of where we were, I think, last month, but that, that what we did. Um, you know, uh, there there are there is a project moving forward um, that the city is doing on the the bridge, and, and that project is moving forward. So I think that there are some some work beginning on the Mark Shuffle North projects. Um, it, you know, just knowing that uh, there's plenty of uh, of money to be able to get those projects under design and then come back. Um, uh, we have to finish all of our A capital projects, so that's what we're trying to accomplish. And it's because it was already allocated to the county, so they get first dibs at it before it goes to north, right? Uh, that's essentially what we've been saying since we've been talking about how, how are we closing out these projects is that, you know, uh, we're going to put those back into the capital pool uh, once we finish all of our other projects to go to Mark Shuffle North. And so... 
essentially um, that's what we've been saying since the very beginning. That uh, bridge on uh, Mark Schiffel uh, north, just north of uh, North Carefree, um, is that still a county project or is that going to be transferred to the city? Um, that That is going to be shepherded through with the city. In fact, um, because of a recent annexation, there has been some agreement between the city and the county. It has not been effectuated yet, but essentially any right-of-way on Mark Shuffle uh, between uh, Woodman and then US-24, the county is going to be conveying here very soon to the city of Colorado Springs. Um, we do still have a commitment, I think, as we made with the city of Colorado Springs to um, to replace that and we have set aside a, a million and a half of our uh, of our maintenance dollars to be able to um, as the city goes through and does that capital pro uh, that capital project for mark shuffle to assist in, in repairing that um, dip um, so uh, we are still uh, closely coordinating with the city of Colorado Springs on any of those improvements to North Mark shuffle okay thank you okay any other questions Thank you, guys. Uh, any communications by any of the committee members? Carl? Uh, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Godfrey, yeah. Um, just want to make a, just an announcement. Uh, in two weeks from today, uh, the Parks Department will be officially opening the Legacy Loop uh, Uinta underpass. Um, it's uh, going to be from 11 to 1230 on Thursday, the 19th. Uh, you all are invited. Uh, if you recall, that particular project, the Uinta underpass, is a joint uh, PPRTA project and parks project. You're all invited for this uh, for the grand opening. It'll be in two weeks. Thank you. Um, if I could also, the starting a week from Saturday is the El Paso County Fair outside Calhan, but um, the I know Calhan's not part of it, but Calhan has a celebration on Friday, but then the fair opens Saturday through the next weekend. So come on out. Where is, where is that? Calhan. <laughs> it's a wonderful time. It is. It's their big annual event. We have elephants and butterflies and racing and bull riding and. What are the commissioners doing this year for? Okay. I have no idea. They're adding a lot of bull. <laughs> Rick. That's. Uh, announced that the colonel has completed his move. It is now uh, office and uh, uh, draw the acres, twelve acres, and beneath that the north end of Hancock. So that's why you've got your clips. Okay. Any other con communications? I had a 50 second wedding anniversary. Awesome. Hey, awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tom. Great news. All right. Not, seeing nothing else, nobody burning to run to the mic. The meeting's adjourned. Thank you.